Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live stream. My name is Matt Bailey, live with SMWS. I'm your national ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. I'm just checking my levels, checking we're live, all that kind of stuff. It says there's people viewing, so I appreciate that it's working. Um, thank you so much for joining in again tonight. Uh, like I said, I like to go air live every single night, and I say that, but I didn't go live for the last two nights. I did a couple of um, quick clips on Instagram and, uh, and elsewhere because it was just a, a bit of fun, but I haven't done a proper live. Um, in a couple of days because I'll be quite honest with you, doing these lives uh, is a lot of, there's a lot that goes into them. And when you do something as big as uh, virtual pub last Friday, uh, you can often get really, um, it can wear you down a bit. Um, so there you go. Evening to everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Lee Wallace, James Finnegan. Thank you everyone always for tuning in and being a part of the live with the SWS. We like to do something for our members every single day. Um, uh, you've got someone playing around with After Effects, classy. No, I, it might be After Effects. I don't know. Actually, you can thank our um, our, 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 my good friend Richard Goslin over in the UK, um, who I owe some videos to. So, Richard, I'm sorry, I'm running late, but um, this is um, it's great. Barry, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. You're allowed a night off or two. Yeah, thanks, Rob. You know what? It's true, uh, Doctor Akers. I do need a night off now and then. Um, just take Monday. I, was, I only intended to take Monday night off, but uh, I didn't. I just got swamped yesterday, and I got swamped today. I didn't even think I was going to get this live in, to be honest. But I thought. I really want to do one because there's a whiskey I want to talk about. So um, that said, I'm going to talk about tonight. I'm talking about something which is from our August outturn. Now, August outturn has been and gone, if you like, but there's still so many goodies still on the site. Now, often with outturn, let me give you a little tip for those members who are, um, I guess, who are just picking up on these things now. Um, often on out on uh, on an outturn, there's the super desirable casks. There's the um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the you know the the big sherried whiskies, the the huge age statements, the desirable codes. Um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, they are in every outturn. Now you see them and you go, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna vanish quickly, and that's fine. Um, however, people often might forget. Our members might forget that every single cask on outturn is panel approved as good enough to be bottled as a society whiskey. The, I've talked a little bit in depth before about this on the live stream about the efforts and uh, that go through the tasting panel in collaboration with the Scotch Whiskey Research Institute um, in in Edinburgh about working on everything they can to improve um, the tasting scores to improve the scientific analysis of every whiskey. This is not just sort of us. Uh, there's there's lots of independent bottlers out there. We are not an independent bottler. We're we're a whiskey club first and foremost, and we look after our members first and foremost. Um, <laughs> 46 cough. Yeah, uh, Jay Hodes, that 55 did sell out in a minute. It, it vanished. Craft time at HQ, that's correct. A uh, night off working on packs. Yeah, exactly. A night off working on packs. It's true. The last um, uh, 12 hours I've been working on packs today. Um, <laughs> no, I'll say for say 10 hours, but then I'll be doing a bit more tonight. There's still lots of work to go there. Um, it's we're doing lots of packs at the moment. There's some announcements coming in September outturn as well about more things, more to do with that which is exciting because there's lots going on there everywhere now before i get into this i'm going to bring up my screen again um here we have something that like i said is in our flavor invasion outturn um that is um truly part of the the whole august experience here um darren howie good to see you mate hope you're well um 46 yes caleb yes cough 46 cough it was a very well priced 17 year old sherried whiskey so and for those wondering by the way i'm going to interrupt myself here uh, and say that uh, for those wondering where their um, orders are, they're being picked and dispatched yesterday and today. There's a huge backlog, so we're working through it. August was big, plus we had to wait for the shipment to actually get into the dock. Look, there's a lot of things happening at the moment um, that we're trying to work around, which is, and of course, for all our Victorian members, uh, stage four restrictions mean some postal services are being disrupted. So please be patient. It will get to you eventually. They all come with tracking. They all come with signature on delivery. They're all looked after. So they'll get there. And um, evening from Tasmania says, Gary, good to see you, Gary. Hope you're well, mate. Um, so here's something from Flavor Invasion. Just one more thing from August Outton I want to talk about tonight. I've had more questions about this bottling than I think just about anything else in Outturn. There it is, uh, 128.9 Electrochemistry. <laughs> Do you like that? Do you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Electrochemistry, uh, it's a Welsh second fill bourbon barrel. Distilled uh, 8th of September, 2010. 211 bottles worldwide. I got asked a great question on our Facebook page from a new member just earlier today asking when they see that number, 
uh, 211 bottles. That's is that Australia or is that worldwide? Uh, no, that is Australia. That's that's the total allocation. So just to remind people of that, and then it says AUS allocation is 30 bottles. Now this is 59.8 percent, so it's up there. It's cast strength. It's light and delicate, and it's from distillery 128, and it's cask nine ever bottle from that distillery. So not many, not many casks bottled from this distillery, but they don't have a huge output either. So um, hashtag team refill. There it is. And this is a team refill moment we're having right here. So I'm going to open this bottle here of electrochemistry. Hope you can all see that properly on screen there. Now, I just want to also talk about how um, how incredible the, the story is behind some of this. Okay. Let me open this first and fourth one. Now, I'm going to get the cap off of that. And here we go. There's the sound. Okay, so I've opened the bottle up. You know what? I used to nose bottles as I opened them up uh, all the time, uh, and I don't do it anymore. Um, I just did it just then, and I was like, why am I doing that? No, one of the reasons is because um, uh, I'm, I'm actually – that's actually from the school of Derbage, I'm going to call it. Andrew doesn't nose bottles uh, – well, not not at least not regularly uh, either. So we both believe now – I mean, I've sort of taken that off, off him. I've sort of borrowed that from him, if you like. Uh, I don't think you can learn anything from it. I don't think you can learn anything from nosing the bottle. So I'm going to pour a dram of that. Now, it's going to be quite light in color. And the cool thing about this is it is light and delicate is the flavor profile on that one. Uh, let me put the cap on that. So let's have a look at that. I don't normally talk color, but there you go. It's quite, it's just like a straw color, if you like, straw and hay. I'm going to give that a moment to open up in the glass. It's quite tight. But it's light and delicate in the flavor profile. So here's the first thing I want to talk about, light and delicate. In that flavor profile, is that um, how do you get light and delicate notes out of a whiskey that is clearly cask strength? Um, yeah, Darren, I put about 30 mils in the glass. You've got to, you've got to, have, you've got to have a proper nip of it if you're having a taste of it. Um, maybe, maybe I put maybe 35 mils. Anyway, um, needs a few more L's in it. <laughs> Um, uh, a couple of bars I go to often offer a nose of the bottle. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, Mark. I feel like if you get something out of nosing a bottle, and I think if you're at a bar and you're and you're contemplating spending a, a fair amount of money on a, on a nice whiskey, I don't think as a, I don't think that's an unreasonable request. I, I often go to bars and say, "Can I have a look at that bottle?" Because a, I want to know how long it's been opened, and it might be a bit flat. And b, um, you know, if I don't know anything about that type of whiskey or what the, what it is or even type of spirit, I want to be able to nose it and go, ah, okay, I'd love to have a glass of that. I just find that you don't learn much off the nosing of the top of a bottle. It just it doesn't tell you much. It's sort of, it's just, it's like you're only smelling sort of the neck pore level and you're only sort of, it doesn't give off any many aromas. It's the, the, it's the most uh, incorrect apparatus for nosing and appreciating whiskey. Uh, <laughs> can I <laughs> get away property off you? <laughs> what? Um, a bit of a short measure compared to John. <laughs> yeah, well, look, this is, I can promise you, I'm, I've, I've got a very good eye for it. That is pretty much bang on 30 mils, um, actually. I'm, I'm looking at it now. It, it's bang on 30 mils. It, it's, if, if anything, it's maybe 32 or 33 mils, but it's not much. It's, it's just one, one standard dram. I would know. I've been pouring 30 mil bottles, <laughs> sample bottles for the last two days. Um, and Matt Willis says, yeah, no, you can't smell much at all. It's true. You can't. It, it, you don't learn anything off the nose of a bottle. So, don't do it. Anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting, um, I'm getting sidetracked here. So light and delicate is a flavor profile that can be experienced in cask strength, and it's the, it's all about the flavor profile. Just how, just as how we can have deep, rich and dried fruit, uh, ex bourbon barrels, just as, we, just as we can have light and delicate sherry casks. That does happen. So, um, oh, sorry, or even young and sprightly sherry casks as we've seen before. If anyone here remembers, sixty. Oh, 60.26 or something the code was. Anyway, it was a, oh, maybe not even a 60. Anyway, there was a recent glove box sonata in B minor was the name on it. I can't believe I remember that. Glove box sonata in B minor. It was a seven-year-old sherried whiskey in the uh, young and sprightly. So cask type does not determine flavor profile. The camera adds 15 mils. <laughs> that's the comment of the night. Well done, Owen. That's actually quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's actually quite, I like that. Um, uh, Matt Hanpour Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, uh, if if your sample bottles have a bit more than thirty in them, you can you can blame me. Uh, they won't have under thirty. That's for sure. Okay. So here we. So 
let that sit around the glass for a bit now. It's a fascinating nose. It's really absolutely like it's – I'm getting like um almost – what do you call it? Like a lanolin almost, a little bit of lanolin in there. Um, but a very a – very me- like it says in the bottle, and I'm going to agree with this, very mechanical oily nose. Super oily nose. A lot of good New World whiskies showcase the barley profile very well. And that's something I'm going to remark on tonight. So this distillery, I'm going to say it, Pendarin Distillery in Wales. I can't really talk about this whiskey without talking about the distillery at all. But this whiskey, this uh, thank you, James Caden. That was the one, 89.11. Fascinating whiskey. Unbelievable whiskey. Like, truly strange. A refill sherry butt that was only seven years old. So seven years in a big cask. So you'd think uh, it's it was you'd think it'd almost be too dominated by spirit character, but it wasn't at all. It had spirit character and it had uh, cast character really meeting in the middle. It was lovely. Um, <laughs> can they beat a nice house measure, Mark Westmoreland? <laughs> uh, Mark is over uh, is uh, over at uh, Wolfburn Distillery, and he's right. You can they beat a nice house measure? That's right. Love a landlord note. Yeah, so do I, Rob. I mean, it's it's a very oily, fatty sheep's wool kind of note going on straight away. But it's not the sheep's wool aspect doesn't really get in the way of this at all. Oh wow! There's the fruit on the palate, like notes of like like cured ham and uh, a fruit basket. Oh. I have never had a whiskey like that in my life. You know what? Let me show you a photo of this distillery. It is from <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, it's either from Wales or New Zealand, isn't it? There we go. So he, he, there's the distillery. It's not very much to look at, I'll be honest. It's a, it's a strangely uh, black building um, on a very lovely day in Wales there. Now, up until 2020, it was the only distillery in Wales. And there's a new distillery in Wales, which has um, popped up. Uh, which has I haven't actually released anything yet, but they are due to release whiskey this year. It's called the Abba Falls Distillery. We don't I don't think we have any casks with them yet. I don't know, but it's not that's, that's not Michael. Um, but I, I I think it'd be cool to see some stuff out of Abba Falls as well. But this Pendaren Distillery was the first uh, whiskey distillery operating in Wales since the late nineteenth century. I think it's a pretty cool claim to fame right there. It's it's a it's a, cra- a crazy set of still exactly, Mark, and they changed their stills very recently. Uh, or not too late, like 2016, I think, was when they added an, a pair of um, a pair of Swan Neck stills. But prior to that, they've only been distilling in um, out of a single. It's a single distilled. There's the um, the the tourist casks, if you like. Um, not, it's not much to show. I don't have anything else to show. I've never actually been to the distiller. I've never been to Wales, so I can't really show you any of my own sort of personal photos. But I can show you what it looks like from the outside and some of the tourist casks on the inside there. I call them tourist casks. That you know, it's, the, it's they're the casks in the visitor center, um, as a and they're all they'd all be empty given the year on them. So, um, and uh, but it is cool to see like you know that sort of development happening in Wales and, and a distillery opening, and it's a very new worldy distillery. A, it's they're focusing a lot on barley, they're focusing a lot on production techniques, uh, and they're focusing a lot on flavor. This is by far one of the most incredible noses. It definitely falls into light and delicate, though, and I love the fact that it does. It's a 59.8% whiskey. I'm getting that right. From a second fill ex bourbon barrel. Now, here's the other cool thing about tasting this. Most of their whiskey goes through a finishing process. So most of their whiskey is initially filled into ex buffalo trace bourbon oak. Bourbon oak. No such thing. Ex buffalo trace ex bourbon casks. Um, then, uh, and some they use some Evan Williams as well, but uh, mostly. Mostly that, and then it goes into a finishing stage of ex Madeira, so wine casks, and then they're watered down to forty one percent for the core range. Um, so it's a fascinating distillery. They've got a cool bit of history there because they've um, they've only been distilling since um, the actual well, sorry, their first whiskies they launched were in two thousand and four. The distillery opened in two thousand and one. I want to get that right, I think, uh, and then two thousand and four was when they first released their first three year old whiskey. They openly admit. And when you talk to them, and we have, um, that uh, most of their whiskey, this is cool, listen to this part, most of their whiskey is between five and seven years of age that they release in the core range these days. Um, most of the private casks are between five and seven. Most of their core range is between five and seven. 
and maybe a couple of seven or eight-year-old casks. This is a nine-year-old single cask. How cool is that? So we've got a nine-year-old single cask from a second fill bourbon barrel that hasn't been racked into Madeira or wine or anything like that. So you're able to taste a ridiculously uh, honest example of the make, an honest example of, of the spirit and the character that is behind it. And that's really that's really quite lovely to have that that flavor and that balance uh, and be able to say there's there's some really interesting there's something really interesting here happening. So um this yeah, like I said, the distillery was founded in 2001, I think, and then first launched their first whiskey in 2004, uh, in the presence of um his royal highness Prince Charles. And um and they produced their own malted barley spirit on site, which is um is uh yeah, and most of their casks go uh, aged on site as well in their own cellars. Um the actual location of the distillery in Wales is uh, it's the southern tip of the um, Brecon Beacons. Uh, it's chosen because of the sites, like a lot of distilleries, um, because of the sites supply of fresh natural spring water. So don't don't put too much effort or emphasis into the whole sort of, you know, oh, it's, the, it's the best um, uh, spring water source or whatever. It all goes through ionization and filtration and everything, but it certainly helps having a good water supply to build a distillery because then you can turn the water into something better also known as whiskey. So we don't see, there's a few flavor profiles we see a few, just a little bit less of compared to others, I'll be honest. Um, sometimes we we don't see too many light and delicates. And when we do, this is the first time I've seen a light and delicate in the new livery. And I'm so glad that it's a world whiskey from Wales. A single cask in this case as well, 128.9, one of 211. It's just lovely. So I'm going to have another nose of that. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I've already noticed that a few times. I'm going to add a bit of water. And because I'm on brand, <laughs> I'm going to use my new society uh, monogram watering jug. We have watering jugs. They're $35. But I'm going to just add a, a generous dash. See what happens to that now. Not a generous dash, just a dash. I'm getting like um, Alan's lolly mixture on the nose now. Wow, I just started storming here. If I lose internet, it was great seeing you all. <laughs> but um, uh, wow, the thunder really just hit. I've got a pretty directional microphone, so you probably didn't hear it, but a thunderclap just absolutely just went mental outside. That was great. Um, uh, if you could just if you could pick that one or champagne, hmm, I'd go with this one over champagne. I like champagne, but I'm not much of a champagne drinker. Um, be interesting to see what what it does to the dram. I always like trying whiskey both with water and without. And especially at fifty nine point eight percent, and from ex bourbon barrel and refill, yeah. Was there a piece about them in a recent unfilter? I seem to recall reading about them. I think there was uh, Doctor Acres, and I think I'll, I'll have to dig out which issue it is. But keep your eyes peeled because the next edition of Unfiltered will be landing soon, and then we've got an announcement coming for uh, some evolution of Unfiltered, which is exciting. That'll be in September, out turn. Don't worry. You heard it. What? <laughs> no way. Well, look, my internet's still working. And sometimes when the storm comes through, it just knocks the internet out. But um, I'm having a nose of this now. Yeah, I think I prefer that with water. So just put this in context for you. This is a new old whiskey that is possibly some of the oldest whiskey they've ever released at natural cast strength and from a single cask. And it's only 220. Now I know you might think that 220 for a nine-year-old ex-bourbon barrel Scotch whiskey seems high, but if this was a nine-year-old Australian whiskey or a nine-year-old Indian whiskey or a nine-year-old American whiskey, these the climates affect the whiskies differently. They age differently, and as a result, they respond differently uh, in 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 the climate. So they age faster, and they pick up oak influence faster. So therefore, there we go. Um, okay, any news on what's happening with gathering and lockdown? You know what? Uh, I can't see who's posted that comment, but I'll, I'll answer it anyway. I, I just, I don't know yet. We don't know. No one knows. The goalposts keep changing every day. We heard about New South Wales possibly going under a mask restriction again soon or a second wave or, you know, all we hear it all. We're keeping an ear, in the, ear, on, ear to the ground on it all. Now, eyes on the pulse, ear to the ground, whatever the phrase is, and we're going to do the best what we can. What I can promise you about uh, gathering, however, for gathering September, uh, we have a massive uh, virtual gathering. So we or we have that already. That's locked away. There'll be a virtual gathering set that you'll be able to get online uh, uh, with September outturn. I hope. 
and then uh, that'll be available um, and we'll be doing a massive virtual gathering, Andrew and I, uh, at somewhere between mid late September. Uh, we will like to, we we are planning on doing some smaller format events like we did last year for gathering around different cities, but it's all depending on what we can get away with. So, uh, and we want to we just want to absolutely be safe. CT, oh, good to see you, mate. Yeah, we absolutely want to be safe with it. Um, uh, and that includes, I mean, Melbourne is probably going to be entirely virtual, and that's fine. That's there's not going to be any small format events in Melbourne. We know that already. Melbourne's in a bit of a different spot from the rest of Australia. Victoria's in a different spot from the rest of Australia. We know that. Um, so, yeah, like the AFL, I think the SN. Yeah, it, I think it's just going to be one of those things where it, we have to play it by year. We have to, we have to have safety within our community. We don't want to say, oh, we're hosting a big whiskey tasting, and then we hear of community transmission at a society event. That would be the worst news possible. So we we want to avoid that entirely. So most of it's going to be virtual. Most of the gathering this year is going to be virtual. Uh, for better or for worse. And I think for better, because it means we actually get together online. Uh, if we get together online, get together, chat about great whiskey, talk about great whiskeys, and enjoy great things from the September outturn and from upcoming releases. And it's really exciting. I'm going to have the rest of this bottle with me at the Archie Rose Pop-Up Bar. That's a little plug for you. Archie Rose Pop-Up Bar is coming up next week. I hope to see as many of you Sydney siders there as possible, all that can fit. And I recommend using the bar booking system on Archie Rose. But there's tickets for the events at Archie Rose are coming up on our website uh, and they're already up. They're already up there. So jump on anytime and we'll see you at those Archie Rose events. Um, and in the meantime, I'm just going to um, wish you all good health. Hope you're all well. And I will see you all for live again tomorrow night. You know what? Have a great night. And thank you so much for um, coming along this ride to Wales with me. And we'll talk more about this whiskey online soon, but I hope to see you all soon and have a great evening. Cheers.